If a part-time magician kidnapped you and locked you up in his basement, what would you do? Young Finn's abysmal survival instincts made him an ideal target for the vicious child predator terrorizing the community, and he's far from the first. Turns out, this freak's been at it for a while, and if Finn wants to survive, he'll have to learn from the mistakes of victims past to find a way out of the soundproof prison before it's too late. Good thing they're all on speed dial. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to be the kid snatcher in the black phone. Bruce Yamada is a talented young athlete with a bright future ahead of him. Just watch this kid beat the stitching off that ball. I bet that little wimp on the pitcher's mound is gonna cry himself to sleep tonight. The Bruce is loose. See that? Your crush turned away in disgust because you're a loser. Man, your arm is mint. That's the thing about old Brucey boy. He'll beat you to a pulp and then shake your hand, look you in the eye, and lie to make you feel better about sucking so bad. What a guy. After locking down yet another victory for his team, Bruce is riding high through the neighborhood, probably off to see his high schooler girlfriend. How's it going, ladies? This is what a winner looks like. He's got no time for weak sauce Homer Hickam science experiments. No, he's going places, and no one's gonna... What, what's that van doing? <sighs> All right, let's... <clears throat> Let's try that again. Everybody knows Robin Arellano doesn't take nothing off nobody. Still, every once in a while, he's got to remind the local wildlife who's number one on the food chain. Spoiler alert, it's Robin. <laughs> Punk's just lucky he got off with a TBI. Have fun stuttering through middle school. You see, Robin's tough on the exterior, but deep down, he really cares. I mean, just look at him sticking up for this scrawny little weirdo after he foolishly cornered himself in the bathroom. Fuck with Finn again. I fuck with you. You tell him, Robin. Fresh off a beatdown, and he's already willing to throw hands three on one. He's the kind of guy you want in your corner when it really hits the fan, especially if you're just too weak and pathetic to stick up for yourself. Yep, nothing's gonna keep this kid down. Not even a concrete hell pit off in some wacko's basement. It's no wonder he's confidently strutting through this creepy abandoned parking lot all by himself. After all, nothing to be afraid of when you're... Oh, is that that van from earlier? Wait, is that guy wearing a cape? Really? A again? Okay, third time's the charm. Finny is, wait, this kid? This kid sucks. Is there literally anyone else? Fine, yeah, Finn. Finn's a dweeb. Here's him sucking a baseball. You blew the big game, string bean. Now the coach is gonna make everyone run poles until they puke, all because you can't throw a pitch to save your life. You better hope it doesn't come down to that later on. I'm not quite sure what world we're in where the closing pitcher on the baseball team is also the class punching bag, but if anyone could do it, it'd be this little Melvin. Uh-oh, bullies the same size as you? Better go trap yourself in an isolated area where no one can hear you scream. Seriously, dude. Dude, if you're gonna be a wuss, then at least be smart. They clearly saw you go into the bathroom. Do you honestly think turtling up on the toilet's gonna throw them? Literally no one falls for that. Not fooling anyone, Noid. Oh no, how did they ever find me? What, did you expect them to think you phased through the concrete wall? Unless you're the karate kid, you'd better always plan on having an escape route or, you know, a 357 Magnum. Next time, maybe try a more populated area with multiple exits or authority figures like the gym or an administrator's office. It's a good thing Robin hadn't gotten got yet. Or you'd be bobbing for brown trout the rest of the period. Maybe if you tutor him extra good this time, he'll teach you how to be a man. Oh yeah, Finn has a little sister, Gwen. Evidently, Gwen sees things in her head movies. Only these head movies involve the intimate details of the recent slew of child abductions known only to the police, which as you could probably imagine, they find suspicious. Obviously I'm the grabber, you dumb fucking fart knockers. Wendell. Yeah, she uh, also does real well with authority figures. I wonder what her home life is like. Anyway, the other guys are shaking her down because she told someone about the black balloon she saw in her dream about Bruce Yamada's kidnapping. Turns out, there actually were some found at the scene, along with one of the other incidents, but no one is supposed to know about that. Okay, so like, of course they don't actually think 70 pound little girl is dragging off boys twice her size and butchering them alive. At least I sure hope they don't, but they probably think you heard about it from someone close to you that might have something to do with it. Someone like, say, 
your violent, abusive drunk of a father. You might want to be just a little bit more cooperative so they don't show up at his work and set you up for the mother of all belt whippings later in the day. Just saying. Oh well, at least she actually has a spine, unlike her jellyfish of an older brother. Hey, look, those three little sh figured out the route you take home from school every day. Better hope nothing happens to your guardian angel. Nah, no need to change things up or learn how to deal with your problems head on. Just go on assuming someone else will be there to fight your battles for you until the end of time. Bummer, dude. Guess you're gonna have to grow a pair now, huh? I mean, messed up as it is, at least with Bruce going missing, aka feeding coyotes somewhere, there's one less batter around to slide home with your dream girl. Not that you'd ever actually go up and talk to her or anything. But now that Robin's flown the coop, life is about to get a whole lot more difficult for you in the not getting your ass kicked apartment. <laughs> Oh, wow. Already? He didn't even have time for a training montage. Fortunately, little sister's here to dish out the brain damage. Probably shouldn't have thrown away that rock, though. Hey, Finn, now's the part where you get back on your feet and thrash these goons before she starts dreaming about herself. <laughs> Gwen! Whoa, Ronald McDonald with a field goal. Are you really gonna let this clown get away with that? Yeah, you know what? Maybe you deserve that little rib tickling the way you let Big Red wail on your sister like that. I can tell you one thing, this ain't over. You think you can just attack us over nothing, punt our little sister in the face, and then go on walking normally the rest of your life? Maybe, I ought to stop by daddy's nightstand and go pay your grandma a visit. You better light one up for the patron saint of punks and pray that I get abducted before I figure out where you live. And personally, sign you up for the next chili con carnival. Anyway, Finn shakes it off long enough to make it through yet another day of public education. On the way home, Gwen breaks off to stay the night at a friend's house, leaving her older brother alone to fend for himself on the mean streets of suburban Denver. Good thing there isn't a prolific kidnapper roaming the area or anything. Huh, abracadabra entertainment and supplies. Not oh, great, it's that f***ing van again. All right, kid, time to step it up a notch. We are not starting over a fourth time. Oh, it's not. Oh. Would you look at that? The owner is super clumsy. And he said snot instead of an actual cuss word. How very disarming. Better get in close to this guy. Maybe sniff whatever's in his hand. Christ, kid. You personally know two people that have been abducted in under a week. Are you really gonna stop and help the Joker with his groceries now? He literally just looked over his shoulder when you handed him his hat. I'm a part-time magician. Would you like to see a magic trick? Yeah. Aw, um, I bet he has candy and ice cream in there, too. You should totally go find out. Are those black balloons in there? <laughs> Are those the same specific items found at the scene of every abduction? I better take a closer look. Might have been wise to shut your gaping mouth while Amort and Joe's trying to witness you. Still, good on you for walking that rocket pen down the street. A wound like that's gonna need stitches. Or, at the very least, staples. Too bad it's in a spot that can be easily explained as a work accident. And while we're handing out participation awards, props to the grabber for running such a clean op. I mean, I personally would have opted for more of a gray man approach and changed up my vehicle and MO every time to keep the cops guessing. But there's something to be said about the use of consistent branding to build notoriety and establish a level of immortality attached to your evil deeds. Bravo. Sometime later, Finn awakens in a dark, dank underground bunker with his captor salivating at the sight of his soft boy skin. You don't have to be scared. A thing bad is going to happen here. Somehow I find that hard to believe. Call me paranoid, but there's something about waking up in late career Ethan Hawke's basement that makes me think we're gonna have a bad time. Really, anytime you wake up on an old stained mattress after getting gassed and shoved into a van, that's a good sign things aren't gonna be great. And the fact that you weren't bloating up face down in a pond somewhere means the friendly neighborhood magician here has big plans. Then I'll get you a soda. Then I'll come back and explain everything. <laughs> Damn, he locked the door. It's almost like he doesn't want us to leave or something. Well, better take stock of our situation. We've got a filthy mattress, a seatless toilet with only enough TP for a short amount of time. Yeah, that's a bad sign. A barred window that's just out of reach. A few rolled up old rugs. Can't imagine what those are for. And last but not least, a rotary phone with the line cut. Uh, Finn, something tells me that if that thing worked, Robin and Bruce would have turned up by now. All right, well, we better get 
cracking on an escape plan. The longer we spend in this pit, the less likely we are to make it out alive. Right off the bat, I'd say we should pull the lid off the toilet tank and smash out all the light bulbs. Then, we just post up by the door with it and wait for that sick SOB to come back with our soda. I mean, I don't exactly expect him to get lost in his own house, but best case scenario, if he comes down at nighttime, we might be able to tap his kneecaps and beat him like a stepchild before his eyes adjust to the darkness. Otherwise, we'll just have to swing for the fences and hope for the best. Oh, or we can just fall asleep on the disgusting bed he provided us like a trained dog. Do you really want to wake up with this wacko's big toe in your mouth? Boy, the grabber really hit the jackpot with you, didn't he? It doesn't work. You don't say. Question is, why do you still have it up? Actually, you know what? Never mind. It's far from the weirdest thing this guy's got going on. That said, there's no way it actually could have rang. He must be losing it. If anything, he probably left it down here just to toy with us. The grabber tells Finn something came up, and he won't be around to play for a while. Oh, darn. Naturally, our hero assumes it's someone on their way to, once again, sort things out on his behalf, so he can go on being a milk toast little coward for the rest of his life. It's not not the police. Someone though. No. Someone's coming. Oh, you mean like they did for the other 20 kids that were kidnapped? Nah, I'm being too hard on the boy. You're special. Everything's gonna magically work itself out for you. Finn threatens to scream and draw the attention of whoever's upstairs. But wouldn't you know it, the grabber went and soundproofed his little torture dungeon. Man, it's like he's done this before. Oh, but don't worry. The best is yet to come from young Napoleon here. If you try to touch me, I'll scratch your face. And whoever's coming will see and ask why. Scratch his face. Sounds like we got a badass over here. Kind of like when your sister got her teeth kicked in and you didn't do jack. Yeah, let me go ahead and break down all the reasons why your plan sucks. One, as we've already established, you're a worm who won't fight back. Two, you've just told him what you were gonna do. So now he's gonna be prepared for you to try something. And three, he's wearing a mask. Better start growing those nails out, Freddy Krueger. Otherwise, I don't see it happening. See, this is not the time for acting tough. Like John Correa says, we either need to comply fully or resist fully. So unless you're actively ambushing the washed up old actor with bathroom fixtures, just keep your mouth shut. Only speak when spoken to and don't do anything that gives him a reason to hogtie you or worse. With Finn's little hissy fit concluded, the grabber shuts off the lights and heads back upstairs. All right, it's time to start thinking outside the box, kiddo. Or this is your last stop. I mean, hey, that window looks promising. If anyone could have broke that window, they already would have done it. Okay, flawed logic, but go on. I'm not getting out of here. I'm not getting out of here. Yeah, wrong direction. Maybe the reason they didn't do it is because they were all too stupid to pile up those rolled up carpets by the toilet and climb out that way. You know, like you. Besides, you actually have something they didn't. A tiny toy rocket ship. It sure wasn't gonna be courage. Seriously though, it's a miracle the grabber didn't take that away from you. Especially after you stabbed him with it. Definitely a huge oversight on his part. Anyway, the back of it has a tiny flashlight we could shine through the window at night to try and get someone's attention. Although, that's kind of a long shot. But, depending on how sturdy it is, you might be able to use the rocket to chip away at the window. Which, I'm assuming, isn't just any old glass. Problem is, we'll have to get through those bars first. And unless you're bender-bending Rodriguez, that ain't gonna be easy. Once I got up on the windowsill, I'd take off my shirt, twist it up a bit, and thread it around the grate to give myself more to hang on to. If we can't bend each of the individual bars out of the way, we might be able to yank the whole damn thing out of the wall. The good thing about this place being soundproof is that we can make as much noise as we want while we're working on this. Of course, there's also no way to know if he's about to walk in on us mid exfil And if that happens, we're liable to catch a beating that make daddy blush. We should try to find some loose tiles or small pieces of wood that we could use to jam up the door and keep him out. Or, at the very least, buy ourselves a few seconds to act natural. So obviously, because he wants to live, Finn gets right to work dismantling this would-be tomb. After all, there's no telling when that nut job might come downstairs with a shotgun and redecorate the place. So he just goes back to sleep again. It all just looks so comfy, right? I mean, yeah, we have to sleep eventually, but maybe curl up next to the door to make it a little harder for the grabber to sneak up on you. The bed itself is bolted to the ground, but we could improvise something with the rugs to make it at least passively comfortable. Either way, you're gonna have to sack up because you're gonna be going through a lot worse than sleeping on tile if you don't get out of here soon. Once again, Finn wakes up to Mr. Hawk's cheese-eating grin, which for some reason makes him want to ask for food. But the grabber says he'll have to wait. If you weren't going to feed me, why'd you even come down here? 
Wow, entitled much? Bennett, you're a guest in this man's home. He's put a roof over your head, given you your own toilet and even a phone. Show a little gratitude, will you? I'm sure he has a perfectly valid reason for why he was sitting there watching you sleep. I just wanted to look at you. You see? He just wanted to look at you. No, yeah, that's that's not a good sign. That said, until you find a way out of this nightmare, you better hope to God he doesn't get tired of looking at you. I mean, I really hate to say it, Finn, but you're probably gonna have to start giving him more of a show here if you don't want him to get bored. Not too much right away, though. Just enough to keep that smile on his face while Gwen dreams up your location. Yeah, somehow after that exchange, Finn still manages to fall fast asleep once again, only to be awakened by the phone. Weird. I think it really is ringing this time. Although my money's on it being some kind of trick rigged up by the grabber to manipulate you. <laughs> you did answer it, thinking someone was on the other side. Not sure why you're so freaked out that someone actually was. In any case, it's ringing again. Might as well answer it, because what else are you going to do down here all day? How do you know my name? We met once. Your arm is meant. Bruce? Whoa, hello from the other side. It's a good thing you botched that last toss, Ben. Otherwise, he might not be so eager to help. As if we needed the confirmation, it turns out Bruce didn't make it. But apparently his ghost stuck around to run up the long distance charges from the great beyond. So we'd better take advantage of this. I mean, we've probably just gone stark raving mad from being trapped in here for God knows how long. But, you know, sometimes you just have to listen to the voices. Anyway, Spirit Bruce just called to let us know about a few loose tiles by the bathroom, concealing soft dirt where he attempted to tunnel his way to freedom. Although, clearly, it didn't work out so well. Upon investigating, it turns out to be true, and Finn spends the rest of the day scooping out dirt one flush bowl at a time. Hey, that's a nice little leg breaker you got there, champ. You know, even if you can't dig all the way under the foundation like Bruce suggested, you could turn it into sort of a spider hole with one of the rugs and use it to stage an ambush when the grabber gets close. If nothing else, those broken pieces of tile might make some nice little shivs when things get up close and personal. That said, you'd better be ready to use this thing during your next encounter with the grabber. Otherwise, he's almost certainly going to find it the next time he feels like watching you sleep. Especially since he's clearly already filled it back in once before. Huh, there's a rug covering the exact spot where one of the last kids tried tunneling out. I wonder what's going on under there. The next morning, the masked magician drops off some breakfast for his little friend. But in doing so, it's seems he forgot to latch the cell door on his way out. This seems way too good to be true. I'm not saying we rule it out completely, but we shouldn't make a break for it until it's dark out. I mean, for all we know, we're 20 miles out of town. For now, we should try to sabotage the latch on the door in case he ever comes back to correct his mistake. It's a trap. Who are you? I don't remember. Did you play soccer? While you're at it, maybe ask him which girls he liked. You're wasting time. Ask him about the trap. Just wait on the other side with that f***ing belt. I'll beat you with that belt till you pass out. Jesus, well, that just figures. I mean, you don't exactly need a phone call from a dead kid to realize Ethan Hawke is probably sitting up there shirtless waiting to beat you with the belt. I'm just glad Finn decided to take his word for it. One thing's for sure. I ain't touching a bite of anything that psycho brings me unless I see him eat some of it first. Yeah, I get he doesn't exactly need to drug us to keep us down here, but for all we know, this is how he plans to kill us. Although, we're probably probably nowhere near that lucky, if you know what I'm saying. In any case, we can stay hydrated by drinking water from the toilet tank, and I highly doubt he's planning on keeping us alive long enough for starvation to be a serious factor. All this aside, we don't have to eat or drink any of it for it to be incredibly useful. We could grease up some of the steps with the eggs, leave the bottle laying horizontally just under one of the steps, and put the tray at the very bottom as one final slipping hazard should he make it past all the others. Since he always wears a mask that obscures his peripheral, Roles, he might not see them until it's too late, which is where stage two happens. Stage two is basically prison murdering him. To accomplish stage two, we need to shatter the plate on the floor and wrap any of the larger shards with fabric from the mattress to fashion a shank or two. However, our primary weapon will still be the toilet tank lid. We'll have to be careful with how we lure him down to make sure he's in a hurry. I think our best bet would be to 
run up like we're trying to escape, and then carefully head back down so that we don't get caught in our own trap. If all goes according to plan, it's smash, smash, and smash until we see brains. And even then, I'd probably keep going until we couldn't tell what the hell we were looking at. Of course, if he does make it down here, it'll be pretty obvious what we're trying to do. So at that point, it's fight or die no matter what. Sometime later, the phone rings again. Turns out to be the last kid with another helpful hint. See the wall separated from the floor. I tore a long cable loose from down there. What am I supposed to do with that? Calisthenics, duh. Ever hear of jump rope? You gotta stay in shape to make sure you don't peter out in five seconds into your mad dash for freedom. Dude, it's exactly whatever you want it to be. It could be a tripwire for the final encounter with Ethan Hawke, or you could use it to climb up to the grate covering the window and yank the sucker right out of the wall. Great thinking, kid. Wait, why do you look so discouraged? Because you fell? Just pile up those rugs and mats and get back up there. You could even use the now dislodged metal grate to carve out a few handholds in the wall. It's that easy. Are you really gonna give up on your best possible shot at escaping this funhouse. <sighs> Let's see if Gwen's got something. <laughs> All right, it's not a ton, but it helps. Might wanna call up those detectives in case the house, the dude, or that Tim Burton looking tree match anything that's on their radar. They can't exactly procure a warrant based on a dream, at least not until Minority Report becomes a thing, but it's better than nothing. Oh, okay, or you could have your alcoholic father drive you around at night in the pouring rain. You know, when nothing you encounter will look anything like what you saw in your dream. That's also an option. Hey, props to Pops for climbing out of the bottle long enough to get behind the wheel. I'm sure he's totally staying sober for all this. Not sure how vividly you remember these dreams once you wake up, but maybe try drawing out the house and trees so other people can have a visual reference to go off of. You never know who might take one look at it and say, oh yeah, that reminds me of Ethan Hawke's place. He's always dragging kids inside the house to put on magic shows for him. He seemed like a nice guy. As for the cops, they're doing some canvassing of their own tonight, which brings them to this winner. So all the kids live in the same district, right? They can get them back to his place very quickly. Is that the grabber live right here. Jesus, where's Paul Smecker when you need him? Is it me or does this guy just have a little too much pep in his step? Yeah, I'm guessing that's not sweet and low on his coffee table there. That said, dude's definitely on to something. I mean, on to something. Hmm, maybe a little too on to something. A Charlie Day-esque investigation board would be the perfect cover for keeping kids locked up in your basement. The detectives should use the golden ticket of probable cause he left out on the table and tear his house apart top to bottom. I, no, I live down in Durango. I'm just crashing here. This is my brother's place. I don't care whose place it is. You both surrendered your right to privacy the second you lined out that carpet fresh. Hey, by the way, where's your brother right now? Back down in the basement, the grabber pops in for another epic mealtime. Only there's something weird about his behavior. Well, weirder than usual. He asks Finn for his name, claiming he normally waits until the article comes out when it's all said and done. But this time's different. This time, he might actually let him go. But first, he wants to know his name. Bullshit. <laughs> I was really starting to like you, Finny. I almost let you go. Ah, uh, no, we blew it, guys. Well, good thing we still have that cable from earlier. There's no way in hell he was really gonna let us go. Although, at least we pretty much know for sure what he has planned for us. As if it was a secret at this point. Oh, look, he left the door open again. I wonder what that's about. Finn gets another ghost dial from beyond the grave. This time, Casper's got bad news. He's running out of time. Evidently, the grabber's worried his brother will figure out what's going on if he keeps him around much longer. And that's really bad news for Finn. As for why he hasn't done the deed already, it's because his latest lost boy has yet to play the game. What game? Naughty boy. And the next part of Naughty boy is his favorite part. Naughty boy. Yeesh. Oh well, par for the course with this lunatic. Either way, it sounds like we're dead meat no matter what we do. So it's time to GTFO. There is some good news, however. Apparently, Ethan Hawke was so dead set on flogging himself a naughty boy, he passed out waiting in his chair upstairs. There's just the matter of bypassing the padlock on the front. Wait, he's asleep? By himself? Yeah, screw the padlock. Where the hell's my plate shank? We can deal with the door once he's marinating in his own ragu. All we gotta do is head upstairs, pull a butcher knife, from the block and stick it right above where the collarbones come together and then give it a couple of twists for Robin and Bruce before yanking it out and uncorking his crazy ass. 
Oh, that's right. This is Finn we're talking about here. Of course, he can't be bothered to actually deal with the monster that's kept him locked up for fucking days. No, he'd rather painstakingly dial in 100 padlock combinations. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, by the way. And then stake his survival on his ability to outrun a grown man with access to a vehicle. Can't wait to see how this turns out. Oh, look, he's awake. Why are you running? Why are you running? Jesus, kid, you finally get your shot at freedom and you ham it up by running right down the sidewalk? Did you honestly think you could outrun that van? You should have immediately ducked back into one of the pitch black side yards and waited for him to take off down the block. I guess we're just lucky Finn didn't make a beeline for the nearest bathroom. Still, if you're gonna make a run for it, at least scream your head off the whole time to try to alert some of the neighbors before he pounces you. You say one word and I will gut you like a pig. Please, like I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, anything he does to us here is far less likely to result in our death than if we go back into that house with him. Gutting someone in your front lawn is just a lot of cleanup. You're better off grabbing the blade with both hands, squeezing as hard as you can, and letting him saw your little fingers off. But don't you dare let him take you to another location. Nighty night, naughty boy. <laughs> Great, you know what comes next. Let's hope Gwen had a breakthrough, or we'll be wearing eight different trash cans by tomorrow night. Jesus, what the fuck? Can you give me these clues that don't mean anything? Yeah, it's not looking good. Well, looks like we're back in the dungeon, but at least it didn't break both of our legs. Fortunately, the grabber grabbed enough kids to keep a steady stream of listeners calling into this little whore show. Caller number four, you're on the air. Today's the day, mother Take it easy, dude. This is a family program. Now, do you have a suggestion for us or not? Have you tried stacking the carpets to reach the window? Yeah, Finn. Have you? Nah, that'd be way too easy. Do you have anything overly complicated with almost a zero chance of success? All you gotta do is burrow a child-sized hole through solid concrete with a toilet tank cover until you reach the backside of a meat freezer. Then, you gotta disassemble the toilet to get a washer you can use to unscrew the back panel, and you're in. Oh, so then I can just slip out through the freezer doors? Nah, it's one of those old ones that locks from the outside. You know, the ones that children used to suffocate in. Yeah, it's a total dead end. Why would you even bother telling me this nonsense? Wait a second. There has to be some amount of space between the freezer and the wall. If we can wedge something in there, like a window grate or the toy rocket ship, we might be able to move it just enough to get our feet in there and then scoot it away or tip it over. Hell, if that won't work, what's to stop us from knocking another huge hole in the wall? Well, anywhere. I mean, it's not like this dude ever heard of rebar. Let's just bust a hole straight through towards the front of the house and then dig up through his fucking lawn like Bugs Bunny. Hey now, don't cry, Finn. I mean, the unhinged weirdo in the Satan mask is gonna do unspeakably horrible things to you until the life drains out of your eyes. But at least you'll get to live on trapped inside a telephone for all eternity, watching other children suffer the same fate. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Hey, speaking of which, there's one last kidnappy we haven't heard from yet. I wonder what Robin's gonna contribute to this situation. You're gonna use a weapon. Fill the receiver with dirt. Pack it in tight. Give it some heft. Then what? Then you get your fucking head smashed in because you were using the handset of a phone as a weapon. Seriously, all the times we help that tool with his math homework and he has the nerve to troll us from the afterlife, he actually goes on to try and teach him how to use it. I mean, just look at this. Now we know why Robin didn't make it out of here. Mystery solved. Just hang up the phone, Finn. We're gonna go use the toilet tank cover. Like we should have done from day one. Gwen, you better figure it out quick because right now your brother is taking advice from two really stupid dead dead ghosts. Wait a second, I think we're getting something here. No way, you actually got it. All right, now what do you say to Jesus? Please, please, I'm sorry I said you weren't real. Hang on, why are you on your bike? You didn't think to dial 911 or pour some water on your sorry excuse for a dad? They've already humored you once before. Who knows how long it'll take you to pedal your way there? He could be a full on finny trench coat by then. Bunch of dead ghost kids out front. All right, this looks like it must be the place. What, you're gonna ride your bike all the way back? Just knock on someone's door, not this place, and ask to use their phone. Whatever. All right, we're gonna have to create exigent circumstances for the police so they can enter the place without a warrant. So to do that, we'll have to... Or you can just walk right in. That works too. Where is everybody? This place looks totally deserted. It's the wrong house. 
What the hell do you know, dude? Have you torn this place to pieces yet? What, do you think the killer's just gonna pile up all his victims on the sofa like the Simpson intro? Your detectives start detecting. Speaking of which, I wonder if Charlie Day ever realized his brother was hacking up children down in their basement. Hmm, what could be behind this door that's always locked that I'm not allowed to go through? Come to think of it, my big bro keeps really odd hours. He drives a windowless van and he claims to be a magician despite never doing magic tricks or seemingly ever performing at events. I know, he must be planning my surprise birthday party down there. Oh, one little peek couldn't hurt. Oh, fucking way. I knew that he was hiding something from me down here. I know, right? He really went all out for this one. Shows he really cares. Hey, don't just stand there. Go call the cops. Your demon spawn older sibling could come down at any second. Oh, listen, don't worry, he's not here. No, 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 don't worry about it. No, we can talk no, about no. this. <laughs> Gee, thanks a lot, Magnum P.I. Way to blow this one wide open. Okay, it's just one grown man with an axe. Could be worse. Oh, great. A roided out attack dog. Awesome. Well, at least he's only chained up guarding our only possible escape route. I want this to really hurt. Really? I couldn't tell. Fortunately, he didn't count on Finn having taken any action at all to prepare some kind of meaningful defenses. I mean, I can't imagine why. It's a good thing there were at least a couple former naughty boys that weren't completely full of it. Finn dodges the axe attack and leaps across the carpet, covering the hole he spent the last few days digging. Please tell me you're not cornering yourself in the bathroom again. With nowhere left to run and the grabber closing in on him, he pulls the wire strung across the hallway and sends the murderous old has-been falling feet first into the ankle breaker 9000. Cut you down to size now, didn't we? Got a nice toilet tank lid with your name all over it. No, Finn, put the phone down. For Christ's sake, you have to get, like, right on top of him to use it effectively. Well, at least it still has the cord. It's for you. Finn's arm is mint! <laughs> I guess we're left to believe that this 12-year-old that couldn't pull a greased string out of a cat's ass just snapped this dude's neck. You know what? Fine. Whatever. Must have had his ghost buddies helping him. Good thing that freezer was full of steaks. They should keep Samson busy while we make our escape. After handing it to the grabber, Finn emerges triumphantly from the basement, exiting the house to find his sister by the police line across the street. It turns out Ethan Hawk owned both properties, and in the basement of the home on the opposite side, the police find the buried remains of the three boys that helped him survive. Five, and the two that basically just messed with him. I guess now their souls can finally hang it up for good. Ultimately, Ethan Hawke was dying to either get caught by the cops or clapped by a captive. And only for that reason. Definitely not through Finn's courage and brains. I think the black phone was beaten. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't trust parking lot magicians. For all you gamer subs nerds, the second of the four secret waifu shakers is out now in full gi with a katana. Pick one up to support the channel and your sup addiction. Use my code unbeaten to get 10% off anything else.